Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Season 29 Premiership Qualifiers Upper Bracket Round 1. My name is Grumpy Chikoy. I'm joined by Hammerham and uh, the wonderful News. How are you doing today, News? Very good. How are you, Grumpy? I'm excited. I was Me saying, too. I, oh. I'd quite like to see... Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of nice names on these two teams, a lot of names that we've not seen in maybe a little while, uh, at least not at this level. I think there's quite a few guys that have played on, like, more fun teams or teams in high, but now they're trying to get back into Prem. It's going to be good. Some, yeah, some really old play, paces, which I'm really excited for. Um, but one thing I'm also excited for is it's uh, it's Badlands. I'm a huge lover of Badlands. I'm super excited for this game. Just starting off with a wonderful map, in my opinion. I think you're in the minority. It, well, I don't know. I quite like Badlands. I don't, yeah. I don't really have many like map references, but a lot of people seem to not enjoy Badlands as much as the other maps. I, I definitely think as a spectator though, it's it's a wonderful map as well, just for the fact that it's um fire is one of the most iconic sort of six v six things in general. Like everyone, everyone knows the spire. But um we are slowly bringing in players, so I think we should just really talk about what's going on in regards to the format of the um qualifiers so people kind of understand because there's a there's an upper bracket and a lower bracket and it's not always fully explained so do you want to kind of give us more of a detail on that well there's also been um slight revisions to it since swift eu died uh so i'm not certain what the changes were but basically now there's four spots uh available in prem and i think there's seven teams or sorry still six teams in the qualifier uh so before there were three spots available and it was going to be four teams uh getting placed in the upper bracket with uh two matches being played there and then two teams in the lower bracket that would meet obviously the losers losers and it's double elimination um well double elimination for the people in the upper bracket and single elim for those in the lower bracket if correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's how it's working I, I think so. I'm not like a hundred hundred percent versed because obviously there has been a few changes, but that's what I know at the moment. So I think that's what we'll go with. I think that's that's the best thing we can possibly do. So I'm just I'm just excited to get this going. So we should probably talk about the maps that we're playing during this. We've got three pretty fun maps to watch. We've got uh, Badlands, Gully, which is a I know you say you don't have huge map play preference is but it's known as a map joy and then finally granary on decider coming back i believe from last season yeah and thankfully it's rc8 that we're used to rather than the uh the latest version of granary pro which is very bizarre uh but i don't think we should get into that i will like to see uh i do always enjoy watching gully wash uh playing it's fun but i like mids especially uh where there's a few different ways of doing it like a few different standard tried and tested ways. Uh, Badlands is definitely one of those maps. Um, I mean, famously, you can just go up your side and you can go up players. Gully Wash is the same thing, and it's it's nice because everyone comes from the same entrance to mid essentially, and then from there they can have two choices. And there's not really a uh, big downsides to either of them. I quite like when there's that option on the mid. Process is another mid I, I really like for that. Um, but there's some mid fights that are a bit more. I don't know, linear in how they play it. I think uh, we're still waiting on a player to get in at the moment. We should probably run through the teams, the two teams that I are playing today. I was thinking the same. Yeah, so um, I'll quickly take it away with uh, the side of Danger Dogs, as uh, they've got a really nice ro roster. Kind of, Some people say it would, it would be stacked because some of the names in here, but I'm just... It's just good seeing these players like wanting to get back into prem. So we've got, uh, we've got a few players. For example, we've got Big Nut Daddy Nation on Roma, who's uh, played a lot of high recently. Um, I'm not too familiar with his prem sort of experience if he's if he's got much. But then we have got names like Kermit and uh, Tom, really well known players. Tom playing the pocket, Kermit on scout. We've got Scrab filling up the other scout roster. We've got Spud on Demo, who's an old school player. He's been around for a long time. These are some really old players. And then we've got Morrow as well on Medic. So all in all, it's a really nice team to kind of see together. 
Um, Moro, I've seen a, a bit of her in um, High, and I saw her mm-hmm. I sixty one. She played in a, fr- a friend of mine's team, and they looked like they were a really solid team. Nation was there as well, so I'm super excited to see how these guys perform. And if you want to take it away with the second team. Uh, yeah, so we've got the Shack, which is the latest German team to try and get into Prem. Um, and we've also got quite big names here as well. Um, most notably, Shockey, obviously, world champion with Epsilon of I-49. He's playing Scout, uh, joined by Ada Loss, who's also on Scout, German talent. He's been playing high the last few seasons. I don't know if he's played Prem, uh, but I think he's one of those players that's... Uh, pretty good at like mechanics and can do his job and within a good structured team i think he could do well we've got leto on demo um he's got a bit of prem history he's been playing high uh the last few seasons uh i think he's been main calling i don't know if he'll be doing that in this team then we've got clip and fishkoff on soldiers uh i believe fishkoff's pocket i'm not certain though i know that clip's also played a lot of pocket so i'm not sure which one of these will be the pocket and then we've got kratos played the game in a very long time uh returning to medic now kratos was also on the danger dogs roster of i-55 alongside scrap nation and spud who are on this danger dogs roster so it's interesting we've got former players of prem former world champions on both teams uh shocky and spud lots of big names tom uh not played prem since champ gg I don't know, I think that's about right. But, you know, a lot of names that uh, have proven themselves in the past, uh, and I'd like to see how they face off. Uh, the teams are more or less ready. Kratos did ask me uh, when they're ready to go, so I think I'm going to give them the go-ahead, and then we should see them starting soon. Yeah. Uh, one, one quick thing about, uh, is it the Shack? I believe is the name, mm-hmm. or they've changed their, their name recently on ETF2L, but there are... Uh, I believe they do their casts in German. So if they do get into Prem, I think it will be they'll be kind of returning that one team that doesn't actually come in English. Yeah. We've not seen that in a long time. Yeah. Uh, Because the last team that did that was um, the Top 5 Rocket or Nerdrager Ascent. Uh, But since the last couple of seasons, I think they've changed. uh, They've not been an all-French team, obviously, since they had Fluo and uh, Credu. Um, but yeah, it's been a while since we've had a non-English speaking team in Prem. You know, it will be interesting to see. I, I it's, there are four lots available between six teams, so there is a huge chance that these guys will um, will go through. We've got another thing going on. I don't know if it's been covered at all, but it's between the Swamp and the Bus Crew. So that's that's quite exciting to see who will win out of that. And um, I believe once we find out who's going to basically win this game and that game they're going to face off and I believe the losers are going to play I think that's how the format we're doing it or we might be doing sort of a round robin format I'm not 100% sure what format they're going to be taking yeah Yeah, well in any case I'm sure we're going to see some pretty good games Um, Mm -hmm. one thing I wanted to ask are there any players you're going to be watching closely well I mean going into the first mid we can talk about who we want to watch but uh, is there any players that you're expecting to come up big this game? Shockey. I want to see Shockey come in and play really nicely because that guy's got such like a pedigree behind him of experience. He's a very decorated player. He's old school and it will be really, really nice to see him kind of come back into his own. He's, he seems to play very confidently in all of the sort of scrims and games these guys have played beforehand. It'll be really nice to see him play. What about yourself? Is there anyone... Kind of, you're uh, really looking forward yeah, to seeing. I'm gonna be looking forward to seeing Spud because I I rated him really highly when he was uh, a top competitor, like when he played with Crowns and he was demo and won i six i fifty eight. Yeah. At that point, I think that was the peak of his demo career, and he's not really played it since then. Uh, he briefly subbed for Champ GG for like one official, but since then, I, he's not played on a Prem team as demo. Um, but I rated him really highly. I think he would be in the conversation for best demos of all time if he had played more. Uh, but because we've not seen him in so long, I'll be excited to watch him come back. In fact, I'm going to watch him to this mid. So we are starting off with the first round of the upper bracket sort of rounds of the Season 29 Prem qualifiers. And we get into this first mid and we see a really nice bomb coming out of 
uh, Clip, but Clip does go down as well as, but he gets Morrow. So they actually have a really good pick at the start of this round. If Kratos can keep himself alive and help with the rest of his team, there's only two players left. But we do see Kermit going in, dealing so much damage to Kratos. And he is on his own, but um, Nation holding back may be able to get the pick onto Kratos. But that was a, a really quick mid. A yeah, bit of struggle good, going on. A good bomb for Clip. Uh, really early on, getting just two rockets. I think it was that he needed to take Morrow, and then Shocky was behind in the house. So everyone that was basically on mid for Dangogs got really pressured. Spud taking damage, and he got anything on the mid. Because Morrow had died so early, the heal advantage came into play, and none of the Danger Dogs players were really healthy enough to do anything. You saw Mitt and Nation at the end trying to go for a play on Kratos, uh, Kermit dying with getting Kratos quite down, uh, and Nation now getting cleaned up uh, by Shocky, I believe. So we're going to see a full uber advantage for Kratos and 50% and, and a bit of off-classing getting set up as the uber comes in now. Yeah, the Uber has come in and the sentry gun is up a level three with a pyro. They're seeing they're trying their best to kind of deny the spam onto it, but it does go down. The Uber has faded, but the players have rotated for the side of your dogs. Seeing if maybe they can deny this push onto the stickies have gone down and time is on the point. If people are sacking for the point, but the ground does go to the shack. I believe that's what we're calling them at the moment. Yeah, kind of unlucky. They had a decent start to the defense, but um, Spud was kind of on the low ground and he walked up without much information, it seemed, and he ended up dying so they didn't have the stickies on the point. And it really wasn't good. I think if Spud had stayed alive, they would have had a good chance to hold that. But uh, going into this mid, I think they're more going to be worried about keeping Moral safe. Mm. Yeah, as we do see Clip going for the exact same thing, but getting denied, exactly like you said, Scrab just not letting him being able to do that damage. As uh, we do see uh, a move through Shithouse maybe from the side of the Shack, but so much high ground to the side of Danger Dogs, they should be able to just push them out. Uh, they push them out through Z and they're ready to stack up to go through Choke at the moment. So not a huge amount of frags during that um, mid fight, but a lot of pressure from... Oh! Kermit goes down. Tom gets picked up by Shocky. That was a really nice bot. Um, sorry, Stickies from Leto. That was really good cleanup by his team as well, so that's a good opportunity for the rest of his team to kind of push through. Yeah, they didn't lose anyone in that. Uh, everyone coming into the point now. Nation getting cleaned up on the flank. It was quite nice to see uh, that they decided to leave the mid, even though they had the pick onto Spud. They lost both their soldiers and they were on the low ground, and contesting that high ground without soldiers is going to be risky. They are trying to move in through resup now, both medics with Uber. The Ubers get popped out here. Uh, no one taking any really risky positions, it's just Spud and Fishkoff on the Uber. This is also committed, going behind now onto the fire. Leto getting the pick onto Spud, and this is a position if the Shack can start to come in. They've got good damage, Moro's going down pretty weak, not health, not much health in play for Danger Dogs uh, as the fight ensues. Tom getting cleaned up now, it's just Kermit, he's going to try and make a play onto Clip, gets good damage, but he's going to get cleaned up as well. It's just Moro and Nation left alive. The consolation will be that they should be able to get Uber before uh, the Shack are in position to push an advantage, but plays it. Yeah, one really nice play was Fishkoff um, held himself really nicely in the lobby area, denying an escape for Morrow for quite some time, giving the rest of his team the opportunity. They weren't able to, but giving them enough time to maybe bomb onto the, the combo. But the Uber does go out for the side of the Shack. They do take down Kermit. They're ho they're holding all this high ground, but the repush is coming out of Danger Dogs. Huge amount of damage, but the Uber does come out really late. And Scrab does get Leto. He's pushing onto Kratos, but uh, Clip sacks for point. We do have Adalos up on the point. He does land onto the point. He does get time, but he does get cleaned up by Leto. Only two players left for the side of the Shack. We should see the repush onto second now. For the side Ooh, of Scrab. Danger Zone. Scrab failing the jump onto Sparry, almost taking a bit too much damage from Shocky, but I think it looks pretty safe for Danger Dogs now. Leto, Shocky, and Kratos are all backed up onto train. The spawners all come in, so six people alive for the Shack on mid. Um, two guys, well, both soldiers for Danger Dogs will be coming into the fight as they were deaths, they were in the respawn queue. Pretty much even Ubers, we saw a 10% advantage when the Shack were popping into last and it's pretty much the same now. But they are moving, looking to move early with it up, Reese up. They've spotted Nation and they've pressured him back and now they might be in a position to do something. 
Yeah, they are looking for opportunities, but um, we do see that on Haunter, Tom and Mario were maybe looking to go into a house to catch a player out, but at the moment they're just going to hold this stalemate situation. Just just gives both teams time to keep their evers, maybe look at maybe sacking a player in. We've got Nation watching the Z area. Maybe a push coming out of Spud and Tob into um, house, but nothing, nothing really at the moment. Both the German soldiers taking heals, spamming that corner. Luckily for Tom, he had backed up uh, just a few steps before they did so. So no damage really being traded there. Spud's still on the loose cannon uh, after the last hold. Uh, he was known for doing that quite a lot in his heyday. Uh, it's nice to see that he still trusts his abilities with the weapon. Uh, there are some sticks from Spud on the choke. So if Fishkov's going to try and look for a bomb here as he does jump around the corner now, doesn't commit too hard. Leto taking a loose cannon, I think, uh, a double donk there and gets launched back. So that's going to shut down that play. There's not really much for the Germans to do here. Uh, they're going to have to come up with something a bit more creative and it looks like they're moving into house to get something going. Yeah, we do see that Tom is still defending that and Shocky does go down to Tom, which is a really nice trade. They have got a single player advantage, so maybe they can look and force a second kill as they are going into house, seeing if they can get the pressure, but the spam is going in on those players. Tom goes in for the sack, it's a really good opportunity to do so, but he does get denied by Adalos and uh, ends up cratering. So really, I think it will probably go back to another stalemate at the moment. Or we may see, because the, the respawn has come up quicker, and we are seeing it, the push through resub. Nation getting forced out, clip taking that high ground, seeing if he can get that positioning. He has gone behind. So this is a really awkward situation for Danger Dogs. They are they may get collapsed on, and I think the collapse is coming. As we do see Clip taking up Spire, the rest of his team pushing on tomorrow. Mora is in a really awkward position. As the rest of his team do go in, the Ubers are exchanged at the moment. But uh, Kermit, seeing if he can just deny and bring players away. We do see Kermit and Ad Adelos both get exchanged during this. The, the bomb does come from Leto, but he's not really able to connect anything because he's going to try and get out. And, uh, oh, really nice stickies from Spud getting Kratos down. This is a really good opportunity for Danger Dogs if they had their medic, which I didn't realize went down. So Yeah, Clip and Fish were both behind. Uh, Fish got cleaned up, but Clip managed to evade the chasing gamers long enough to get a bomb in and he cleans up two uh, Tom and Moro so both medics dying this should favor danger dogs so though they do have the further forward spawn um or sorry it should favor the shack danger dogs are trying to play the cap a little bit now but they know they're gonna have to back out because the heals are in play for the Germans uh Moro Tom and Kermit gonna be coming now from resup swiftly followed by nation and we're gonna see it reset back to the chokes neither uber in play I was kind of surprised that when Shockey died, uh, that he didn't opt opt for uh, an off class. But they did almost make it work with that um, that kind of aggressive play. They they tried to get clip behind and ended up getting the nation pick as they did it. So maybe that's their kind of go to play. It was uh, a it was really beautiful seeing that opportunity taken to kind of wrap the entire team. As we do see a push from Fishcock, but. Spud gets a double. Was that a double dunk onto Kratos? Like, this is really unfortunate, but Morrow's down as well, so they do trade medics. We're just going to see a DM fest at the moment as Adolos is really healthy, able to aggress onto Spud and Kermit. Kermit super low, but beyond Greybridge. Um, he does get a meat shot onto Adolos, though, so he's really low. But Leto is supporting him, so they could see if they can maybe deny Spud in the trash area as he does manage to get back into. Lobby, they're going to see the repush from the side of Danger Dogs. So they're going to maybe pick a player off here as the spam does go in, but Leto and Adolos are able to get out. So, and we're back to the reset on the second yeah. hold. <laughs> well, so what they tried there was they were actually on crits, and Fishkoff took the crits around Haunter. They managed to get Moro with it, but because they crucially don't have that vulnerability, and Spud realized um, he put the stickies on the choke, so as Kratos tried to peek, he just died. Uh, which is pretty intelligent play, but I would have thought the Germans would have had a bit of a better plan there. So trading medics again, uh, and we did see Kermit on spy, because he was spy checking, so they should know that it's Medigun versus Medigun here. Uh, Tom jumping up towards the Haunter, trying to get some information from the choke, but it doesn't look like anything's going to happen. It doesn't look like dogs are really trying to get much going here. They're quite content to just deal with the, uh, the plays that the Germans are setting up. Even though they are 
running at a disadvantage on points at the moment. They are seeing and maybe just pick off players as Tom does go down to clip. This may be an opportunity for the Shack to push through. They are buffing players, looking to maybe bring a player through into from choke. The bomb does come in from clip, but he gets denied very quickly by Scrab. So sad, sadly, we're not seeing a huge play off that. And it is going to reset with Tom coming back earlier. So they may they may see if they can sack a player in. Maybe get a um, get a force out of Kratos. But at the moment we're seeing the stalemate continue. Yeah, and it doesn't look like too much is changing. Again, no off classes. Uh, clip spawning now and they will be coming back to mid. I quite like to see uh, Bents of Spies. So where... where have the resupply open so if danger dogs get a pick or if they deal with the sack and they have the same situation where there's 10 seconds before the german players back up i like to see a spy going and play that in those circumstances in any case the germans are moving into resupply grumpy they're trying to get something going i think i think they may be going for what you notice is that as the play get that um, higher ground onto battlements and being able to do really well but kratos took a huge amount of damage on that push i think they're going to have to play very passively on this mid we do see kratos going for the health pack on uh, their house so this could be a nice opportunity for some space but sadly i don't think um danger dogs really wanted to try and take that that opportunity it would be really risky for them because the sticks are still up from leto so if they maybe went through Haunter, they might have had a better chance, but at the moment it is just going to stalemate back out. As we do see Clip bombing on to try and deny Nation in the um, sort of battlements area, as Shocky is also seeing if there's any opportunities. But we are seeing a very sort of plays around the, um, the drop down and Haunter. Not really much sort of opportunity being made because there is all of these angles are covered by the side of danger dogs they are holding really well but it is very stalemate at the moment shocky peeking choke a little bit fishkoff just behind him maybe they're gonna get another bomb going in here classic danger dogs being said in the chat by kratos uh they were known for not pushing in some against some teams uh, Shocky actually dying, I think, to Tom in house, so it looks like more when Tom, now that they've got the pick, we're going to try to get something going. Tom taking the buff, going in deep into house, gets a nice rocket onto Kratos, surfs towards him, but doesn't quite connect the second, so he will die. Shocky spawning very soon, so this is a nice 10 second window for the Shack to try and get something going here. It looks like they might just be sending fish for another sack as Shocky comes up on scout. They, they're not looking for any off classes at the moment, but this could be a go good opportunity to do something. The Uber does come out of Kratos, but he does sadly drop fish as uh, the rest of his team just kind of deny this push. But Leto is trapped in. That demo pick going down will be a really good opportunity for Danger Dogs to push through. They did Clips obviously. Hiding. Clips going for the bomb. Uh, he he wasn't able to connect, and he does get cleaned up. But that was yeah, that was a good spot though. That was a really good. Um, sort of way to hide there just underneath the point seeing if you can maybe bomb and get Moro if they're a bit over complacent with their push but we do see uh, Danger Dogs maybe even taking second off this as we do see um, Leto's not able to really get any defensive stickies up as he is in trash at the moment so, yeah, and it looks like uh, the Germans are just going to have to back up Leto taking a bit of damage but it's more or less even Ubers, they've got time to set up their center gun before uh, any aggressive Uber comes into play. And this is uh, the first real chance for dogs to get something going, to uh, maybe try some sacks on last. Interesting that Spud's still got the loose cannon, I don't think he's died since that last hold. Uh, so maybe they're going to put that to use in some interesting way. Uh, if, if they do end up having an exchange, it would give them the opportunity of being able to knock players around. So have, having that available to them would not be a bad thing, and it's it's nice to see that we're using the version of uh, Prolands without the without the ridge on top of the the entrance to last on the top ground. You're not seeing the classic sticky placement, so people can peek a little harder than they usually would. But um, I do think because Nation went down, we're going to see Danger Dogs back out, wait for that that respawn. But the aggression can come out of the side of. Uh, the Shack, but they do have two off classes at the moment with uh, Shocky just swapping back on to Scout at the moment, maybe using this. Tom is in really deep on drop down though, uh, but no real picks at the moment for, speaking for either of team. Off, speaking of off classes, Nation has come up on Sniper, so they're 
of putting their chance, their fate into Nation's hand here. Big Daddy Nation, I think they're reliant to put their fate in. Uh, and they're just going to be retaking Lobby now that the Shack have backed up towards last. Um, be interesting to see what kind of sightline Nation tries to go for and what target he's going to try and pick. I think it'd be risky, or probably not worth it to try and get a pick onto the Medic. I think it's probably safer to go for some kind of pick on one of the flank classes that perhaps aren't covered as much. Nation's in main now by the barrels, looking for the sightline on top left. Shocky also on the counter sniper, dropping down, the, seeing each other in main, no shots being taken, none connecting at least, and uh, looks like they will just settle in the stalemate. Fishkoff coming down to peak a little bit. It's perhaps spam for Shocky, but it looks like Shocky's clearing the stickies on top and he's going to try and go for a bit more of an aggressive sightline. We are seeing the nations currently holding the main, and he does get shocky, so that's a nice that's a nice pick. He'll be able to play a bit more aggressively now. He doesn't have to worry about that sniper. But uh, like I said earlier about the door, that actually gives snipers a little bit further of a sightline. I seem to notice because of that, and the Uber does come in from Danger Dogs. The exchange does go out. A lot of flashing from Danger Dogs, though, as we do see the Uber fade out a lot quicker. Tom does go down. The aggression comes out of Fish Cop. But he is going to probably back off because he's going to get picked off because he's not connected with his medic at the moment. As we may see players either back out. It's probably a good idea to back out right now. Just with that single pick lost. Spud really low as well. So this could be a good opportunity for the side of the Shack to push out onto second. If they're able to kind of mobilize or if they decide to just stay. If they don't need to rush. Then they can play a very relaxed game. There are 13 minutes left on the clock, and the Shack are one round up, so Danger Dogs shouldn't be taking too much time with this. Uh, they don't want to, they don't want to risk failing too badly and then having only a few minutes left when they're on their last or something like that. So they want to make this push count. They want to make this conversion on this point worth something. Tom with the dispenser pick as uh, Nation takes a lot of damage in main and does get cleaned up by Fish and Clip. Uh, so now they're one down. It was the Sniper and they are off classes on the Shack, so they probably don't have much uh, pushing power right now. Shocky is trying to peek top, but Danger Dogs aren't anywhere to be seen. They've actually backed out of uh, Lobby. Uh, Spud going back to the forward spawn where Nation's spawning. I don't know, usually this would be a good time to take quickies. We've seen a lot of demo men do that, pushing Badlands last. Uh, but we'll see what he does up for. Nation actually taking the Pyro, so this is... Uh, on the pyro, spud on the quickie bombs. Definitely going to see some sort of point play here. We're going to see probably spud using the quickies to clear uh, Leto stickies on the last point. But I'm not sure how they're going to try and utilize the nation. It's probably going to be to get onto the point once the stickies are cleared and blast any defending players away. We, up, we also see Shocky on spy in main, so maybe he's going to get something before this play uh, goes off. I have noticed that whenever you seem to call something that oh my god Shocky just takes down Spud that's a really good pick for his team they may be able to collapse on this they do have Big Daddy Nation on the Uber with the Pyro but he has been separated so hopefully he can maybe spam but that sentry gun is going to probably help clean him up and he does go down to uh, Shocky so this is a really good opportunity for the, um, for the team again three players down coming in but this should be a second conversion for the side of the shack as tom is taking huge amounts of damage the rest of his team is backing out through choke this is a really good opportunity for the rest of his team to basically push through maybe even get second but um that's only if spud's not there in time but he does seem to be with his team this is probably going to be a bit of a stalemate at the moment a bit of a reverse stalemate though so we may see it play out very differently because they're probably not going to play around z as much the side of danger dogs and we may see that Clip may see if he can force him way through. We do have Kermit just watching, not really trying to get much presence. But as I say that, we do have Tom and Big Daddy Nation going through together, seeing if they can maybe pick off Clip. We do have uh, Tom going behind, maybe seeing if he can get towards the, the last point. I'm not 100% sure what he's doing. He's just maybe distracting. Shocky does have to look back. So does Clip. They are being pulled away as... The rest of their team is on Haunter at the moment, so this could be an opportunity, but Tom does get picked up by Shockey in the end. But he did manage to pull two players away, so that wasn't necessarily a bad play from him. It looks like it's going to be enough for the Germans to want to push with it. Clip in Valley, spamming a bit. Fishkoff now in onto Morrow. It's one rock. 
hit and doesn't quite connect the second or the third. Uh, nice movement there from Moro Fishkov getting cleaned up and now spawning back onto the mid fight. They've caught enough of a time window to use this player advantage. It looks like they're trying to go into resup and maybe get something going there. Yeah, they're, they're currently trying to just get clip out at the moment, bring their med in. But Adelios is clip. They may be looking to see if they can sack onto something. They could maybe even hide clip in resupply. Push was going any further, but the Ubers have been exchanged on the choke as we do see Tom bomb in, seeing if we can catch any players on there. Kermit is currently down, but resubbing back up. We do see the push from the Shack, maybe seeing if they can come through. But again, I think it will probably stalemate. As we, as I say that, they are pushing through choke. Huge amount of damage from both teams. We do see Tom go down. We do see Adelios and Leto go down to Spud and Scrab. Spud being taken down by Shocky. So many trades at the moment. Two players down for both teams. If they can scrap this, they may be able to do something. Big, big Daddy Nation down. We do see the bomb coming out really nicely from Clip. But again, Moro surfing really confidently away. So she should be really proud of her movement there. She's not letting them get the second uh, rocket onto her and she's keeping herself really healthy. So, so that's really nice to see. Scrap, Scrap doing good damage to those trying to cap the point. And uh, with the earlier respawns in for Danger Dogs, they've got good chance to chase here. Uh, Tom goes in deep, gets good damage on them, but no one else is there to chase with him. Uh, Adelos dying now gets after getting that Tom frag. Uh, and the Germans are backed up into a pretty safe position. Kermit's on sniper, and we're going to see another stalemate on the mid. Uh, Kermit's actually watching Valley right now rather than Choke. Uh, doing what I was suggesting earlier of trying to go for that flank class pick rather than uh, just go for the medic. Nation and Fish trading a lot of damage in house. Uh, they're both going to have to back out though, Spud peeking the choke by himself. And uh, I think the Germans are quite content in the position they're in right now, with 8 minutes left and they're one round on the board. They've been controlling the stalemates pretty well thus far, uh, so it's really on Kermit's shoulders to try and get something going. Yeah, the, t the team needs to get some really nice picks. If they could get... Ideally they want a demo or a med pick, but obviously getting that ability to maybe take out Clip get a player behind, be able to kind of collapse onto the side of the shack, Danger Dogs would have a really strong uh, push onto the second and into last. But we do see Adelios going down to Kermit, so that's one of the flank classes down at the moment. So we may see a re-aggress go through as the stickies are gone away from Choke, and that does give an opportunity for Kermit to peak, but he is getting denied straight away. Tom goes in, the force does go out, Tom does exchange for that force though, but this is a good opportunity. Moro with a 100% add at this point as they do look to push in. But um, they may wait on Tom for this because they don't they don't have to rush it. Even though they are their point now, they don't have to rush it. They can wait for their player to come back, use that advantage. Uh, only three seconds left for Tom. And I think it'd be nice to see if they maybe look to go in through uh, resub, but they, they seem really indecisive. They're not quite going in, but they're going in at the moment. It's um, It looks really uncomfortable for the side of Danger Dogs as the rest of the team does join them now. Uh, Clip holding that Spire. Tom does go in, denying that add five attitude of Clip there. And uh, we do see the second point getting converted, but not without Letter having something to say about it. Shocky does go down to Spud and um, Big Daddy Nation is down as well. So one player's... This is a good opportunity for Big Daddy to maybe look at an off-class again, but they didn't use their Uber to push into second. So they do have still that 20% add at the moment. I'm not sure if they realise they still have the add. I think they might be trying to go with it. It's not clear at this point it's too late. But I do like that they did take... Uh, they took second point in there without having to use the Uber. It was the first really clean sack that we've seen this game. Tom only trading his life for the Uber and no one else really got any pressure. So well played to Tom. Uh, and they did, interestingly enough, like I'd like to see that they took Kermit back to the forward spawn to switch him to scout from Sniper uh, and also waited for Tom so they were just pushing in with six. It's the safer play to go for just guaranteeing that they can take that point without using. Um, and I like that decision but they've not been doing too well in the stalemates. That's As a demo down. Sing, Nation switched to the Sniper and he gets the opening pick so now that's a really good entrance for them to try something here. They look like they're going to Uber in through main. Uh, a huge amount of time by Scrab. They did that force the Uber quicker. Moro doesn't need to use it as early, and they have just re-pushed through left side, getting sticks onto point. We've got so much time. This is an opportunity for Tom to just deny people off the point. He, it just needs to be touched. 
But sadly, it's only nation left, so he maybe can get a pick, send someone back to the respawn room. But it looks like, sadly, himself is going to go back and join his team. So that was that had the potential of such a good push. It's crap. And and it's crap's ooh. trying to go for a back cap. No, he's not. He's came back round. He's onto Kratos. He's not been damaged really yet, but he's going to have to back out as he does get a lot of pressure. Um. I did like what they tried there as actually Scrap does get caught. This might be an opening for Shaq as long as Bud struggles to deny this choke. Um, but what they tried there uh, when they got the scout to play the point, Kratos dropped down with the pyro and they popped Uber to save the point. Uh, and it would have been really good for them had Moro not taken quite a bit of damage because she had to force her Uber quite early. Uh, as we do see Nation going down as well, only four players alive on the midpoint for Danger Dogs and they're just going to have to back out uh, one of them was a respawner. So that's a pretty clean retake from uh, the Shack. They did have a slight Uber advantage and I think Danger Dogs were aware of it. Uh, but Moro should be able to get Uber before this push. Yeah, really nice bomb in there from Fishkov, dealing so much damage to players, meaning that if they do try and push in, they're going to have to flash around denying all of those buffs. But uh, the exchange has happened and uh, Scrab does get picked off. The rest of the Shack are bombing in now. Leto super low. He does get picked up by Fishkov. The rest of his team is following now. Uh, I believe that was close to a uh, crater for Clip, but he does get picked up. Big Daddy Nation in with a last dish bomb. But Tom and Big Daddy Nation are down. That's both the soldiers down. They can just walk in. It's just more on her own. She that got a nice was... frag onto Fishkov and... Uh... Shocky not wanting to chase, instead opting for the cap to get his gamers uh, the forward spawn. Spud actually trying to contest this. Really nice decision from Danger Dog. Scrab pushing up with some heals as well. Spud's trying to fight a 2v1 on his own, but Moro's doing a really good job of keeping him alive. Uh, there's quite a lot of pressure on the cap here. Clip is on to Moro, gets one rocket, gets cleaned up by a nice pipe from Spud. Moro with the nice strafe to avoid the air shot, and this is a pretty tight fight right now, Grumpy. Yeah, no, it is uh, it is definitely looking like an opportunity for him to kind of get the upper hand uh, but it is looking unfortunate for danger dogs with the demo loss but cliff is down as well so we do see the aggression coming out of the shack as uh, leto is just dealing so much damage to those in inside of trash as well as denying the point so he's he's really trying to focus as much space as possible gives shocky the opportunity to take down big daddy nation leto really playing really aggressively seeing if he can create an opening for the rest of his team it's uh it's a good opportunity for a, a nice little exchange here or maybe even a pick we i don't see any off classes at the moment but we may see the um the sniper coming out of someone on the side of uh danger dogs but kermit is playing that pyro pick we do see Kermit now swapping to Spy, maybe seeing if he can get something there. So that'll be something to keep an eye out as he does go through main. The rest of uh, the Shaka are all holding on top of battlements. So Kermit's going to have to play it really patiently here and hope that they're going for a main push. Maybe seeing if he can sneak way up. He has gone behind. I think Leto may have saw the door open though. So that might be unfortunate for him. But he's playing Kermit's Rita. I think he's just about got away with it. It doesn't look like anyone's spy checking or that they're aware of it. Um, and I do like the, the proactive decision from Dogs to take the spy and look for the pick. Kermit now onto Leto. He's not been spotted. He does get the stab. He will go down to Shocky, but that's a good opening. And with one minute left, they're going to have to make it work. Scrab taking the Uber. They get the pop onto Kratos, who's on the point. Spud with a nice sticky trap to clean up Clip. Shocky is going back to last, and he is on Nation. He does get the frag, and that will be the back cap for the Germans, and that will be put it, putting it beyond doubt. The first map going to the Shed. That was... I, that was... I thought that was like a, oh, it's the last sort of time play from Kratos, but he was just crouching on the point, not letting himself get knocked around as much. Just so he could um, he could deny it as much as possible. I think that really gave a nice opening for Shocky to get behind and get that point. So all in all, that was a really nice sort of back cap from the side of the Shack as we come into the third mid. Nation in on top of that choke, seeing if you can maybe deny players as Kermit is in quite deep. But Clip is behind. He is getting denied by Spud though. As we do see Nation go down, Kermit go down. There are th two players down. We may see a third going down in a house. Mora is separated, but that is the first round, first game, sorry. Well, match. Game? Map. Map. 
Matt, that's what go. I'm looking for. Matt, <laughs> to the side of the shack. I do apologise for my brain fart there. I think uh, it was a bit closer. I think, <laughs> I mean, it was a bit risky. Um, it looked like the Germans had planned for Shockey to go for the back cap as they had pushed out. Uh, Kermit did well to get the stab onto Leto. It created an opening for them. But it just wasn't enough. And even if you get that demo pick and Kermit dies, you're pushing with 5v5 in an uber trade out of last. It's like not ideal. They would have really needed to abuse the fact that the Germans were lacking the area denial from the demo. And it's not easy to do that pushing out of last. Um, but nice, nice opportunistic play from Shockey to uh, to go for that back up. He's been known to do that in the past. Well, um, I don't know at the moment we have time to maybe have a look at the logs on this. Not a hundred percent sure. We'll get we'll get someone whispering in our here, so we will see them in a moment. But to be honest, when it, I we didn't really go over predictions, but I thought Danger Dogs would be a stronger team on that map. But it, it's really nice to see that the side of the shack have been played. They they played a lot of their their sort of pushes really really cleanly in certain parts. And the first mid was just an absolute just steamroll for them. So it's it's nice to see as we do have a look at the logs. Um, we do see at the moment that the damage is on. Both uh, Fishcop and Shockey top in for the side of the blue team with 286. Not a heavily high damage um, yeah. sort of map. I wouldn't say the damage is the main thing to look at. Yeah. What I do notice is that Shockey has twice as many frags as the next highest trackers on the server. And uh, that tells a pretty interesting story to me. He's kind of been... Uh, I mean, he's, he's known for just creating picks out of thin air on Scout and just really uh, playing it efficiently. Yeah, I think the problem with dogs really was uh, I'd like to see more from the scouts. I don't think that they can make use of their scouts as much when it's uh, stalematey play. But I think Kermit and Scrab are the kind of players where when they're on and when they're hitting their shots, they're very scary to play against, but they're not quite as consistent as maybe the likes of Shockey. Uh, so Gully changes things up a bit. I think this allows Spud to shine a bit more as it's a pretty good demo map. Uh, but it's, it's got to be something special to, to deal with that shocky presence because not just like uh, team fights and you know, you know directing, leading the shocky does a lot by himself when he's uh, in 1v1s. And I mean, he won that back cap, he went behind a few times. I, I saw him beat Tom in the 1v1, I think, two or three times. He's uh, he's kind of stealing the show right now, shocky, mm, indeed. But like you said, Gully Wash will uh, will see a lot more focus on the side of well demos in general. It's a really demo friendly map, just because there are a lot of sort of tight areas, especially near the near the last point, as well as the different chokes. Big Door being a good place for stickies to be put up. So it will be interesting to see. Um, one thing on stream right now is the frag percentages with um, with the teams with twenty percent of the frags seem to go around the the last of uh, sorry the second of dogs so it, 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 there's been a lot of play mainly in sort of the second of dogs and that's what we saw especially with those stalemates and that probably padded that out a bit for that. yeah um i feel like it's kind of i don't know when i when i look at these two teams and the players i think the the ones that we need to stand out are the players with the most experience. They're the ones that need to, uh, you know, take charge and make sure their team is on the right track. And those are the Shockey and Spud on either team. Like, the two world mm. champions, the two players that have played at the highest level. Um, and Spud didn't have a great game last time. I mean, he, he did a really good job, uh, as he was known for when he played, of staying alive a lot of the time, very low deaths. At one point, he had a seven kill streak. I remember seeing that. But... Uh, he didn't quite have the same impact as Shockey. Uh, and I think they're going to have to play around Spud a bit more uh, on this map. Maybe give him more Ubers, have scouts playing tighter to him. Uh, and they're going to have to do a better job of shutting down Shockey. Not only that, but I think uh, Clip and Fishkoff did, really good job, uh, did a really good job at a lot of the transitional play of just playing good positions and dealing good spam damage. Whereas I think Tom and Nation were a bit more careless with their lives. Hmm. We, we we will probably see a 
we will see a more sort of sack heavy um play i it would it would be nice to see the experience of spud come out in this game especially as it's such a demo heavy map so uh, i think we're starting with the first round of the second map the first first round of the second map of the upper bracket rounds of the season 29 premiership star and uh, I'm sorry, I just got stunned by that as players are going down. Spud and Tom getting denied straight away at the start. Really confident start to the mid fight for the side of the Shack. I do apologize for stopping what I was saying midway through, but that was absolutely stunning. As we do see Fishcop chasing the team into that top area all the way into River. This is a good opportunity for the side of the Shack to really capitalize on that mid fight, pushing so fast, just using all of that aggression. They're probably even going to look at maybe going through main. The moment we do see that Fishkov and um, Kratos are in the main position, but they are going to probably rotate out out now, knowing that the med didn't die, and it's probably a good time to look at getting picks at the moment. Yeah, I think this is where we'll see it slow down a little bit, and they try and come up with some sort of plan. Shocky playing with going under, uh, trying to get some attention there. Clip looks like he's ready for a bomb. Peaks in the corner, doesn't quite commit, just faking out a little bit. He was the one that got the crucial opening pick on that mid uh, on Spud with a really early bomb, so... Maybe he's going to do some magic for us again. Tom actually getting a lot of damage into Lobby, but does die for it. Nice play from Leto just to cover his teammates back there. And Clip looking for the opening in River. He gets the jump in now, gets cleaned up instantly uh, by the Pyro and Scout. Fishkoff as well trying to peek for some spam, but uh, Kermit doing a good job of reflecting there. So two picks for Danger Dogs. Uh, Scrap trying to peek out. He does rush out into the... The big door area doesn't get anything really onto Kratos, um, and it looks like everyone's happy to reset onto last from Danger Dogs. One thing I noticed is the actual drop uh, death of Leto. He just overextended past the um, into a trap that was set on uh, on the the shutter area. So it's really unfortunate that he dies as uh, Shocky dies to the exact same trap from Spud. So that that trap's doing him really well. It's a nice little bunched up trap gives him the opportunity to pick off one player and it does mean that the side of the shack do need to back out now even if they um even if they obviously aren't going to give up this second easily but they they have to give that space until their players back they can't risk losing anyone else we do see big daddy nation checking for off classes at the moment not seeing any any i they may swap kermit onto scout he may be going back to scout right now but they're currently just checking for spies as he must have spotted the Shocky on Spy, but he has come back to Gout. Yeah, I like. don't think he wants to commit to that play. Uh, no no rounds on the board, only three minutes have been played, so neither team is too worried about what's going on here. It was the early round that allowed uh, the Germans to control the game last time. Um, they've been playing this hold pretty safe so far, they didn't really risk anything, uh, even though they lost two. In their last attempt, dogs couldn't really find anything to come out. Uh, Shocky running in through main has clip jumps in from river, but they're both going to get out alive, not really committing much at all. Um, and it doesn't look like dogs are going to be doing anything either with the pyro and ng. It's what's really good with that though is they've given their team a huge amount of knowledge, and we do see that um, Shocky was maybe seeing if he can get into river, but he may get caught off by Tom as Tom does bomb in. Shocky's so low, but um, that was a really good reaction from Tom hearing that call out and being able to try and deny that player from escaping uh, but at the moment we do see that maybe a river push is coming out or get presence in that river area but at the moment they're they're keeping all of their options open maybe seeing if they can get a pick onto a player as we do see fish Cop just spamming with the rest of his team seeing if they can take down that sentry they're probably going to attack from different angles because every time they they're going to peek, they're just going to get met with the spam of the the rest of uh, Danger Dog's team. As, uh, as soon as I say that, Leto and uh, Clip, sorry, Leto spams Clip. Tom denies Fish Cop. Shocky nearly goes down again. He's playing really. He's going in, but he always he's always using the best escape routes. That's just that just shows his experience as a player. Yeah, right? I mean he's he kind of made famous just abusing movement on scout he was always known for that and uh it's not going to be easy to uh to kill him in those situations he's been doing that kind of thing longer than probably anyone on scout uh 
but I do I do admire the dogs players for trying to secure that frag. Right now, there is quite a nice sticky trap from Spud on the shutter. Uh, it's kind of clipped into the wall, so you can't really see it until you open the shutter, uh, and then you get killed. But both soldiers right now in river, they're both going underneath, trying to get the kill onto Nation, because they have spotted him there. Nation does manage to trade with Fishkov. Nice job there, uh, dealing with the buffed soldier. But uh, it's just going to mean that the Shack are going to have to play it a bit more passively. They're retreating more towards the health kit in river. Uh, but it doesn't even look like dogs want to do anything with that, and wisely so. Pushing out of last with one man down and two off classes wouldn't really amount to anything. I'm surprised that they've not gone for the option of maybe seeing if they can bring a pit, pit class into this, maybe bring Nation onto Sniper to see if they can maybe get an angle, get a decent kill and push out. But it is only sort of the start of the the round, no, the, the, the map, so they don't need to... They, again, they don't need to play it too quickly at the moment. Nation goes down to uh, Shockey just now, and that, that might be an opening for them. It gets played by Shockey as well, Bud has the stickies ready. Uh, taking a lot of damage uh, is Fishkov. No one there to clean up though. So it's not really much of an opening for either team again. Uh, another three minutes of tick down since we last checked on that, and uh, there's not too much going on here. Um, I like the sentry position from Scrab. It means he can... He's actually moving it now that I've said that. He's moving it further forward. I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish here. Maybe just trying to deny any sacks, but it does open up the sentry to a bit more spam. I think Kermit, or if he was playing Pyro, he'd have to play close to that sentry to cover it from the spam, but he just uh, switched to check off classes. So he should have noticed that Shockey has now taken Pyro, uh, and it... Uh, Danger Dog should be ready to react to a point play. Yeah, I, it was quite a good decision to obviously move that tree because um, even though it's going to be open to more spam, it did take some time for the side of the shack to adjust to that as they do come in with the Uber on Shockey, using him to just push people away from the point as the Uber exchange does come out. Kermit on the heavy, helping damage, damage with the rest of his team. Shockey getting picked up by Big Daddy Nation. You got Kratos and Adelios trapped in River, but um, only Adelios goes down as we do see Leto is low. Hopefully Scrab can pick him off, but um, he does get picked off in the end. And the sticks do go uh, for checking anyone sort of anywhere where they can go into that sort of lash push. They are looking to push out into second uh, from River, so that's an opportunity. But they may not be aware that the, the team of the Shack is below them in Big Door. So if uh, Mora committed, she could have got caught out really easily there. As uh, they are looking to see if they can get second, and that has been taken. But at the moment, it's just seeing what opportunities are there. I really like the sticky placement from Spud during this game. He's putting them in really interesting uh, places. Like you mentioned, the, sh the shutter placement, and now sort of that lower placement, giving if anyone tries in to aggress on Big Daddy, he can call it. And he can call anyone going into Big Door, so they may be able to get a pick off, off just that alone. So it's quite interesting to see. Yeah, it's nice. I think not enough demos do things like that, where they put stickies uh, on other, the other side of the map from where they're playing and have a teammate ready to call them. So when uh, their opponents look, they will think that the stickies aren't there. And it might come into play now, Fishkoff peaking that lower area, but he doesn't quite take much damage from it. Uh, the Germans are playing quite close to Big Door with Kratos. They're probably going to try and get something uh, going there. But Nation is holding that shutter. Spud's got stickies. They're keeping an eye on it. So there's not going to be too much happening. Uh, what we have seen some teams do in the past is they try and get the medic to rotate towards Big Door. And then they open up space on Choke. But as I say, that Fishkov comes in with the Uber. Moro really taking nice some damage. Really nice surf Moro de just denying that damage onto a, a milk in that Uber. And that's given them a couple of kills. That's three kills down. So they have the opportunity to push into mid here. Leto is super low. It's a uh, clip and shocky. Maybe seeing if they can sack, maybe pick up a player or get the point. But uh, we do see the loose cannon still out for Spud. As shocky and clip go down to a single rocket from Nation, and there's only one player left. So hopefully, you may be able to get a kill using that and the traps he set up. But I don't think they're probably going to play as aggressively as that. They know he's there, so they're just going to push him out of choke and get this midpoint. So that was. Really nice reactions from Morrow that basically won that second push for the for her team actually. 
that that little bit of movement delayed the Uber and it just meant that they had a much stronger Uber during that sec second push from the side of the shack. Yeah, no, they do actually have uh, a bit of an advantage here because I believe they killed Kratos with the Uber. I'm not certain about that, but in any case, 35% Uber advantage. It does look like they're aware of it. Tom bringing it in from Big Door. There's a lot of spam on him. They should play some rotationals, uh, rotational heals here. Someone else should be leading after Tom takes so much damage. But uh, he tries to commit a bit more, it takes again way too much damage. If someone else was leading that, it would have been a lot better. Uh, now that Tom dies, it's been too long for Danger Dogs and the Shack have managed to get their Uber. So they're going to move towards the choke, maybe going to try and do something with this pick. Uh, Adelos is playing on the lamp above the choke. Uh, everyone else from Danger Dogs is actually quite passive. Fishkoff's in drop down. He has been spotted by Scrab, so he's just going to have to retreat again. Spud trying to get a kill on him. Uh, but not quite enough. Uh, at, the, at the moment, I think it will be a very, very stalemate situation as both teams try and look at opportunities to to get players. Um, Adelios uh, no longer on that lamp position, so not looking to sack down. They may force someone free drop down again, but at the moment, I think with only one player though, clip on the big door, they may spot this, and I think they have, and they're going to bring their players over to big door, see if maybe they can push with the reaction. Uh, rotation has come out of side of the shack as Tom again is in a position where he can get spammed quite heavily but he is taking huge amounts of damage but using that that overheal to help his team but Kermit and Nation do go down this is really really bad situation for the side of Danger Dogs as we do see the bomb come in from Fishkoff he does force the uber this is a good opportunity for Kratos and his team if he just holds holds a good position they may be able to pick players as Tom is trapped behind maybe get picked but there is time on the second point as Tom does deny, deny with uh, basically time for his team as Clip does go in for the bomb see if he can get more more super low more does go to Clip and picked off by Spud and uh, they are going to see if maybe they can push in but and um, Scrab are in a position where they can get the point if they don't get picked up that was actually really close if they didn't react quick enough to that they would have they would have lost the round and spud somehow staying alive through all of that despite the fact that he committed into last with scrab the scrab was in 1v1 then two spawners came alive and spud kind of just danced around in lower main and then walked back out on 40 hp i don't know how he does it but in so many situations he lives like that and uh, if he had died it would have been a great opening for uh, the shack they are sitting on about a 70 percent uber advantage but uh, pushing out of last 6v6, even with Uber advantage, can be risky as Adolos is taking a bit of damage up top. The Uber comes from Kratos into mid through big door. They're leaving some players to cap, but they're not going to get any frags with this. Spud and Nation now uh, on the Shack choke. They're going to get collapsed onto. Shocky goes down. Fishkov's weak in big door, but he does have Kratos to heal him up. Uh, and now the Uber advantages have leapfrogged into the Danger Dog's favour. They've got a decent sized advantage here. They've got the pick onto Shockey. It's not going to be too much of a problem that Nation's dead, but they are going to be going through the choke here. I think they're going to they're going to peek with Tom and see that they've got so much space and the rest of the team is going to join him. As they are spamming the players on the, the battlements area, Clip nearly going down to the stickies from Spud, creating a huge amount of space for his team. They're going to spam people out into River. They may be having to rotate into last. And it looks like they're doing so as they are picking up the second point. Hopefully we'll see the Danger Dogs maybe take some of this momentum because the, if they do know they have still got a bit of an advantage so if they can get a decent pick onto the player of Kratos they can obviously abuse it but Kratos does get his uber. So sadly that was a really finite opportunity though. I, I say that like that's an easy thing. That would be very difficult to do. As uh, we do see the repush out of the shack. Moro getting bombed onto but um, Fishkop getting... Uh, denied by Scrab and it is an opportunity for the side of Danger Dogs to really get some presence into this lobby area and then once they've got that presence they can look at opportunities for pushing through as they do have Big Daddy Nation on Sniper peaking main at the moment maybe seeing if he can pick off Shocky he's just spamming that um, sentry gun wasting all of the metal so it does go down and Shocky does change over to the Sniper so this is a good opportunity for both Snipers to maybe pick off a player give a good opportunity for their team. Yeah, well, in the last duel when it was uh, Shockey and Kermit, uh, Kermit did come out on top. Or sorry, no, it was Nation at that point. Um, but uh, Nation does die uh, to some soldier spam and 
Shocky dying. I don't know if it was Sticky Trap or if it was just Bam Sticky. So both snipers dying here. It's 5v5 again. Spud taking a lot of damage in lobby. Does get arrowed up by Morrow. Uh, but playing a little close to the chest there. Uh, all of Danger Dogs are retreating to a bit more of a safe position in lobby. As Nation does come back on Soldier. And we see no off classes for uh, the Germans. Shocky's checking on Spy. If there are any off classes for Danger Dogs. But it looks like they're quite content to hold this even Ubers with uh, the cookie cutter lineup. Which I would have liked until they switched to Pyro Energy. Permit jumping behind, being able to uh, deny deny sort of any sort of organization from his team. He's distracted so many players. Leto nearly goes down to that really nice uh, bomb from Nation, but the sentry gun does pick him up in the end. We do see Fishkop and... Um, Kratos go through, they're getting denied with the stickies even though they bought the uber out but Moro still holding on to her uber, she's got a good opportunity even if she exchanges now to do really well, really nice movement, she's just kind of jumping in the corner though at the end of that uh, they're able to pick up Fishkov and um, they've got a huge uber advantage now so if they don't get a force they can maybe look at pushing into last and uh, getting around on the board for themselves Yeah they are moving towards the shutter now the Uber comes in for Scrab and Spud shortly behind him. The Sentry's doing a lot to deny them. The Pyro as well. They get the Sentry. Pyro's taking damage, but it's not quite enough. Nation dying in the back lines. They're going to have to retreat here. Kermit dying as well. Clip's already behind. He's probably going to try and collapse onto them in lobby. But they do manage to back out, and this will probably be resetting onto second. Two picks and 30% Uber advantage for the Germans, however, Grumpy. Yeah, and really nice um, sort of return of the situation for themselves as they pick up Tom. They've, they turn that around really nicely into their own advantage as they're spamming players out um, into mid from Big Door. So it was looking really strong for the side of Danger Dogs, but sadly they, they just weren't able to get take it much further. And now we see the Shack very organized in their, their push, getting ready to push into second with the Uber. They do get the push. Moro is at 90%, so if she can just kite the damage and heal up some players, she should be okay. But very close Uber, she does go down to Leto's air sticky though. So that's a huge advantage for the Shack as the rest of the players come up and they'll probably be able to clean up Kermit. Kermit going on to Kratos but sadly going down. Only Big Daddy Nation left, he's a bit late to the party so we see Shocky maybe seeing if we can get that 1v1. Jumping behind, he has, he has got really nice damage onto Nation. Nation goes down, they've got a good opportunity to get some time onto the point here as Leto does take down Tom. Shock, all Shocky needs to do now is play that point for his team, but the resubs are back. Kermit does go down as we do see Clip get the Big double dog air shot from Spud. <laughs> Ridiculous, that guy. Ridiculous. In any case, uh, I think the Shaq overestimated the pushing power they had there. It was 4v2, I think, or 4v1. But there were two respawners coming in shortly that they should have realized uh, and they left one to cap so by the time they were pushing in last it was essentially a 3v3 and they didn't get frags quickly enough so the further respawners came in for danger dogs uh, and then it kind of really just shut down the push uh, they did have a slight uber advantage so they can fall back on that but morrow should be getting the uber this time she won't be going down to an air sticky he's got a good opportunity to hold this uber for a team as the rest of the team do push in they have uh, exchanged though but they do have the much stronger uber so they may be able to pick off players as Lato goes down but he, not before he takes out scrab tom goes down as well um delios is in really deep but if uh kermit wasn't there to pick him up he would have maybe got spud but we do see shocky go down as well that's both scouts demo and one of the soldiers down for the side of the shack so they really need to back out uh, Clip seeing if he can maybe do a sack play, but um, decides against it. Seeing if he can catch out Spud, but the rest of Spud's team is there to sort of protect him from that situation. I like but, what he tried there. Uh, he knew that it was just Fish and Kratos left alive, so he jumped out towards the choke. And he tried to sticky behind Kratos, so he couldn't exit. He did get good damage onto him, but if there wasn't really anyone to support him, and it's kind of hard to do that by yourself as demo. Uh, but I, I do like the fact that he tried. Nation actually taking a lot of damage in Victor as the Shaq are trying to push up Spud as well. Not the healthiest of players. They are both taking quite a bit of damage, so both teams are going to back up to a bit safer position and retreat more towards the hold as uh, Tom's looking at this choke by himself. Yeah, we do see that it's going to go into a stalemate. St stalemate. Stalemate? Stalemate situation um, at the moment. We do see that 
Big Daddy Nation are holding his position again there. Uh, Spud's setting up some traps on Big Door area and then they, he may rotate over, hoping that Nation will call it for him. But cu currently no real opportunities for either team to push through. His Tom does take a lot of damage, but nothing really that anyone can capitalize on at the moment as uh, Scrab is holding above, getting ready to drop down if anyone comes through. And yeah, now there's only 10 minutes left in the map. Neither team has a round on the board. Both demos have stickied up choke. I think they're both kind of worried about uh, sack plays. And again, no off classes, so neither team being like too proactive. As I say that, Shocky does go in through the choke, try to get someone to make space. Surf's crazy high into the air, but Scrab is right there to meet him with meat shots. Uh, so now they've got the opening pick. They tried to make a little play with Shocky. Uh, it didn't quite work. And now the onus is on Danger Dogs. Tom going in drop down. He has been spotted, so he's not going to be able to get to that. Uh, he does actually go in, gets one nice rocket onto Kratos, almost connects the air shot, but it was a nice surf from Kratos. That'll be Tom going down, and because Shocky's up already, they've got a player advantage to use here. Yeah, it's it's not looking good as we do see Adelios with the rest of his team spamming Scrab off that point. Spud getting caught out, dropped by Mora. Mora not popping the Uber early enough to deny that damage as um, we do see Kratos holding onto that Uber, only using it now. Uh, on to Scrab getting picked up, Clip getting picked up by Big Daddy Nation. We see Fishcop getting picked up by N Nation again. He is going deep at the moment with kills, but he does sadly exchange at that point. The rest of his team will be able to back out into second. We probably will see some off classes come out. Kermit going straight on to the Pyro. It's, it's played him really well during this, but oh, he's, as I say that, he's uh, off classed onto the NG. Getting that up in time is the rest of. Um, the Shack look to wait for their players to come back, get in position where they can uh, take that that lobby area or go through river. Looks like they are holding up uh, with fish comp, seeing if uh, anything's free in lobby, which it is. So Let Leto will probably join him, and the rest of the team will probably find a good position to move forward. As we do see the build come out, didn't see the dis ad on the bottom of the screen. I do apologise, but I don't good. think it was anything too significant. Um, mm. It's. Again, going back to the stalemate, it was a bit unlucky for dogs. I think it must have been a miscommunication because Spud looked like he wanted to go forward for the trade. More or so, a lot of players uh, walking in the choke with kind of free reign, and it would have been a, a risky decision decision for her to walk forward like uh, willy nilly. So I think I think there must have been a miscommunication there because neither of them really made a bad decision. Just Mora and Spud not quite on the same wavelength. They have been quite uh, together on the last hold, so. Not all is grim for Danger Dogs, as Shocky does die, but it's still not an opening for them. Uh, and I don't think they want the timer to go all the way down while they're on last, so they're going to have to try and get something going. Uh, they still have Scrap on the Pyro and Kermit on the NG. Uh, and Shocky is in the spawn room right now. Uh, he decides to switch to Spy, so we do have something different coming up now. No uh, proactive off-classing from... Danger Dogs, I'd like to see them go back to spy check. If not, they won't be aware. Spud actually gets lucky spam through lower main and finds Shocky on the spy. Uh, so they should be aware of it now. The gun goes down. And now eyes are on Shocky to see if he can come up with something magical. Yeah, it looks like Shocky's just playing the slow game at the moment. Just seeing if he can get himself in a position where he can obviously get a nice pick. Spud does get in a position where if, if he decloaked at the right time, he could have picked off Spud. Would have been a good pick. He doesn't necessarily have to go for that med pick. A lot of people like to do on the spy picks. As long as he picks a player, he does get spotted out by Scrab, though, and he is going to have to back off. I don't know. He, he needs to. It's kind of a, a game where he needs to know if he's going to be useful because the more he, he waits and the more they, they build up sort of a nice position for themselves the more chance he's got of being denied and I think that's the riskiest thing for him is he needs to he needs to act relatively quick. He can take his time but he needs to get in and get out and create an opportunity for his team at this point with this spy play. As he I is think going, what, they, what they need to be trying is uh, two set plays together and it looks like that's kind of what they're gearing up to do. He's going towards the point and what I'd usually like to see if you have a spy that's been spotted if you go for a play onto the point as well as a play onto the medic at the same time, you can usually get something done. I think it would make more sense for Shocky to be the one uh, pressuring the medic as there is a point play. Because, you know, when you're defending and someone starts capping the point, 
everyone kind of goes into that hectic mode of fast reactions and they forget about things that they should be remembering. That, that would be the perfect time for Shock and Spy. But at the moment, he's just sitting behind the point. I mean, they did spy check him earlier and he did stay alive, so they know they're just going to be going through ideas in their head of where he could he be. He actually gets the pick on to Nation. So that actually opens up in a whole area for them because they know that the um, spy is down there, but he has now gone into secret. Maybe look if he can walk his way up when his um, when his team pressure pressure in. As we do see Frischkopf maybe going for exactly what you've just said. It's like they're listening to the cast at the moment. As he starts, that's getting time. You see the players down, but Shocky died sadly to the um, sentry. So this is a bad opportunity. Three players down for the side of. The shack, so they're gonna lose. They're gonna have to back out. They can't stay in. They'll start losing players otherwise, as they are looking to back out through yeah, the big well, door. Yeah, three down right now. Spud got one pick on Toletto with a trap, and another onto Fishkopf with uh, loose cannon. So the Germans are actually taking an Uber trade in. Uh, they've not yet popped on tomorrow. Morrow not taking too much damage. She pops now. Spud gets cleaned up, and Adelos is running to the backup. There's no one on last. Tom might be able to make it in time. If Morrow can give him a nice little flash, it would be good. They do clean up Adelos on the cap, but with Spud dead. Uh, Scrab kind of left out to dry on second uh, and only two picks in their way. They're not really going to get onto second with that. So they're going to have to back up to last. Nice play from Adolos, seeking that opportunity to go behind and pressure the cap. And it really saved his team there. Before that happened, they weren't in a good position to defend the second, but uh, it just brought the dogs, player back, dogs players back so that they couldn't really help Scrab. Uh, and that was the, the crucial play there. And like you said, as soon as... Uh Point, you do see players just get really, really frantic. Have to just do everything for the point because frags don't mean everything in a uh, 5 CP game mode. As we do see Adelos kind of maybe looking at an opportunity to go in, um, as there is one player down for the side of uh, Danger Dogs. So Nation just coming up now. We do see that Fishcart will be joining the rest of his team, so they don't need to back up that much they are playing safe in the lobby area but they don't need to go too far out so they are going to probably look at opportunities to maybe force a play in here we have only got two minutes and 40 seconds well 45 seconds left in the game so it's looking really really quite awkward at the moment two players As three players for the germans going into lower they're just going to overwhelm nation probably yeah they are going to overwhelm nation and this is a good opportunity to spread out the side of or do you, I was expecting that to actually be an Uber play from Kratos, but they're going to probably bring the Uber up below if they can, because I thought they were going to probably try and take out that sentry. But this is a bad situation for the side of the Shack to be in. They do pop the Uber. Mori doesn't need to pop hers, though, so they may have an advantage on their push out as Nation is just relentlessly going forwards. But Leto does pick him up in the end and doesn't die to his own splash damage, which is really fortunate for him. So... They, they're at a disadvantage at the moment for the side of the shack so that's really un unfortunate really really unfortunate it was a nice it was nice um, sort of proactive decision to go into water area but it didn't really work out for them in the end as Tommy's getting collapsed on by three players and we do see Morrow with um, scrab popping the uber they're gonna chase the players of um, the shack, as sadly Kratos does go down, so does Clip. Shocky with a miracle headshot on tomorrow. Can he get another onto Scrab? Not did, quite. Scrab. Did he love that? Up. Yeah, well, but unfortunately, Adelius was at the back and he got that round. This is really unfortunate. One one minute twenty. I think I think this is going to go to the side of the shack. I don't I don't see how they can do it. I think this is this is uh, game four game in total while the round of this um this premiership qualifiers to the side of Shaq as we do come into the second mid of the game it's just been one massive long game as we only have 55 seconds left on the point we do see Frankov jump in Tom goes down Big Daddy Nation goes down to clip the clip craters himself Frischkoff comes round the back maybe able to pick Mora and with one rocket picks up Mora and Scrab helps clean up Kermit and that's the mid the side of the shack so it's definitely secured that's a full wipe on mid that is the round the the, the whole series of maps going to the side of the shack yeah straight 2-0 victory uh very slow game 
on both maps, yeah. especially this one. Very little of what was happening in terms of transitional. We do see a bit of garbage time now as Nation gets the nicest clan kill onto Adelos. Adelos, the one who scored the winning back up. Uh, Spud now surfing away through it. There's going to be some running in of Scrab and Kermit as they try and clean up for action. One second remaining, not quite enough time. But yeah, that will be a clean victory for uh, the Shack. They really controlled a lot of the stalemates and they played a pretty strong game, if I do say so myself. Yeah, they did. They did play a really sort of methodical. Meth yeah, I, I don't know I how else to just... describe it. I was about to just say seven. They just played a yeah, seven style kind of. of game. That's the only way I can describe. It. Is it was um, it was there wasn't a huge amount of sort of crazy pushes. The the the. The pace at the start of the first round looked like it was going to be round, 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 round. And then it just started to slow down and become this methodical gameplay that we do see a lot in sort of European sixes. It's not always the worst thing. It's really nice to see all of these sort of big brain players trying to make the best decisions. And like, like we said, with Spud and Chucky in this game, you've got a huge amount of um, brain power available. So I'm quite excited to see how the other rounds will go. I don't know if we can see the results of the other rounds, but yeah, congratulations to the Shack for winning their first uh, round in the qualifiers. Yeah, and does that? Um, yeah, let's let's have a look at the logs. Uh, I think we should bring them up on screen because it'd be nice to see how it compares to the first game. Uh, looking at the damage stats, we see Fishkoff and Spud way out in the front. It was quite a low damage game, obviously, with a lot of the stalemates. Um, I'd like to see frag leaders. Uh, it does look like it was Fishkoff as well. Scrab also showing up. Uh, he had quite a nice Uber towards the end, but uh, I don't know what stands out to you in the stats here, Grumpy. I'm interested to see how Shocky did during this because he was such an impactful player during the first round, and it seems like he's he wasn't able to do as much in this round as he was in the f the first map in in badlands he played he was able to clean up a lot of kills and create a lot of opportunities but he wasn't as impactful but like we said with gully wash it is a demo friendly map and um i've got to say a lot of the traps from spud were really really good and in really interesting places that you don't see that often like you you tend to see the the normal sort of carpets in front of the shutters you tend to see um, traps on the cone, for example, on second. But he was placing them in really interesting places, and it meant that he was able to get some really nice picks with it. And um, I've got to say as well, Morrow played a really nice, um, really nice sort of uber game during that uh, during that that map specifically, because she was able to hold on her uber for a lot longer than um, she should have been. She was basically denying so much opportunity for the side of the shack it was really unfortunate they weren't able to convert that into rounds really yeah we're looking at the uh the medic stats just now it's interesting to me that um very even heal split between all the heavy classes for uh the shack all hovering around 22 percent fish cough clip and leto uh not often in uh in the current meta do you see rumors getting that much heals uh, a more typical spread over on danger dog side with nation on seven percent and uh quite a bit more for tom that's that's more what you'd expect but the uh the shack were spreading the heals quite a bit i don't know if they that had much effect on the uh, team fights but it did seem like clip was having quite a lot of impact in a lot of situations they they really favored pushing two soldiers through big door they really favored that sort of play trying to catch out nation every time or Tom, who, whoever was there in Big Door, they, they would take two players in. And they did play a lot in River during sort of the last situations. So it doesn't su surprise me that there's a lot of heals on the side of Clip. In any case, but, um, I don't know, are, do you know if we're doing interviews? I, I'm not 100% sure if uh, we could have a whisper in our ear about that. I, d I don't think we will be. I, uh, it doesn't look like anyone from either of the teams has joined Mumble or anything, so it probably wasn't arranged prior to this. In which case, let's not do the interviews. Um, but do we know if we have any results from the other games? I will have a quick look, see if anything, see if any of the games are still going. We've also got the uh, frag percentage on screen just now. 
telling the story of pretty much all of the map being dominated by the shack, with the exception of uh, Danger Dogs Last, where they showed that they could defend pretty well. Uh, and it was really just that one back cap and then the other one on Badlands that made the difference. So tight defenses, but not quite tight enough to deal with the back caps. I think that was the uh, the general story of this match. Yeah, it was a lot of opportunities, but sadly, um, no real sort of capitalization on some of those opportunities, as both teams were really good at denying sort of an opportunity would arise. The other team would try and take it, but the other team would deny it so quickly. So it was very much um, sort of two teams just smashing each other like two brick walls for a while. And it was... Um, I, I wish there was more rounds, but I always wish that in sixes. I always like it when there's crazy plays, but it doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad match. It just means it wasn't as intense as some maps can, uh, some matches can be. Yeah, in a lot of situations, or especially in a lot of the stalemates, um, both teams were playing it really safe, uh, not really committing to it, and it didn't really seem like it worked out in the favor of dogs. To be honest, I think it might be down to um, the fact that most of the stalemates, uh, especially around mid, it was the shack that were controlling mid, which does give you a spawn advantage uh, in terms of the spawn timers, at least on most maps that I'm aware of. Um, maybe if the mid fights had gone a little differently and it was Danger Dogs playing the stalemates from the attacker's position, it could have gone, could have been another story, but uh, we'll never know, sadly. Granary's very much a soldier heavy map, so it would we would have seen a lot of um a lot more from Clip and uh Fish Cop as well as uh, uh Tom and uh, Nation. But they did they did hold their, their areas really nicely during this and there was some really good methodical TF two being played during during this game. In any case, uh, I don't know if there's much more to talk about. Or yeah, I, do I you just, want to close us out? Yeah, I've just um, I was just checking to see if anything's come up, but sadly um, I don't see anything on the ETF two L about the other games. So we'll just have to find out later. Um, so I'll close it out. My name's been Grumpy Koi. I've been joined by Hammer Hammer on production and news, and uh, we will see you in the next matches.